Fred likes to go horse racing, which is event R, or to play cards, which is event C, with his friends on a Saturday. Whichever he decides to do, he either wins or doesn't win. So there are two options when he goes horse racing. Either he wins or doesn't win. That's it, just two possibilities. Similarly, when he plays cards, there are just two possibilities. Either he wins or doesn't win. The probability that he goes racing is P of R equals 0 0.4, and the probability that he plays cards is P of C equals 0 0.6. Notice that these two probabilities add up to 1, as expected, because he either goes racing or plays cards. These are the only two options. So the probabilities of them must sum to 1. When he goes racing, the probability that he wins is 0 0.2. So we could write that probability like this. This is a conditional probability. The probability that he wins, given that he goes racing, is 0 0.2. And when he plays cards, the probability that he wins is 0 0.3. So we can write it like this. The probability that he wins, given that he plays cards, is 0 0.3. Now, we want to fill in the missing labels in this tree diagram. And... Um, given options from this list here. So, so Fred either goes horse racing, denoted by R, or plays cards, denoted by C. And w what we write in here is just the probability that he goes racing. Well, we know what that probability is actually at 0 0.4. We just want to put in the statement. Here we have the probability that he plays cards. Now, in here, we have to write down the probability that he wins, given that he goes racing. So we saw that already. That's P of W given R. And here, we want the probability that he does not win. That's what W prime means, or W dash, uh, given that he goes racing. So W is the event Fred wins. W dash, or W prime, is the event Fred does not win, or... Fred loses. Now the probability that goes in here is the probability that Fred both races and wins. So the event that Fr Fred races and wins is a more restrictive event than the event that Fred races. Because when Fred races he could either race and win or he could race and lose. Similarly here we see that if Fred plays cards, then there are two options. Either he wins at cards or he loses at cards. So for this part of the tree diagram, for this branch, we want the probability that Fred wins given that he plays cards. And for this branch here, we want the probability that, that Fred does not win given that he plays cards. Then we have to consider the probabilities of two events. One event is the probability that Fred plays cards and wins, which is more restrictive than the prob than the event that he just plays cards. Because when he plays cards, he can either play cards and win, or play cards and not win. Now let's fill in some values here. We already have P of R is 0.4, and we have P of C is 0.6. We have the probability that he wins given that he races, which is 0.2. We have the probability that he wins given that he plays cards, which is 0 0.3. Let's work out some more of these probabilities. Okay, suppose that Fred races. Well, there are two options. Either he wins or loses. He doesn't draw. He wins with probability 0.2, which means that he loses with probability 0.8. you see that these two probabilities must add up to 1. So we're conditioning on the fact that he races. So when he races, there are only two options, two possibilities for him. Either he wins or loses. So the probabilities of those two events must sum to 1. Similarly down here, when he plays cards, he either wins or loses. So the sum of these probabilities must be 1. So this probability is 0 0.3, so this one here must be 0 0.7. Now, what about the probability that he races and wins? Well, the event race, racing and winning is more restrictive than the event that he just goes to the races. So you would expect this probability here to be less than 0 0.4. That's what you expect. 
because it's more restrictive event this event um, that he races and wins to calculate this we could look at the basic formula for conditional probability the probability of an event conditioned on another event is the probability of the intersection of the two events divided by the probability of the event that's conditioned on so you see that this event here is the one that appears in the denominator so now we want the probability of r intersecting w well we just cross multiply so you see that to get this probability here we have to multiply 0.2 by 0.4 that gives us 0 0.08 so you, you can see that that's a much smaller probability than the probability that he goes to the races as expected so it only makes sense to multiply these numbers together because um, the event racing and winning is more restrictive than the event of just going to the races. When I say Fred races, I mean he goes to the races. We can do exactly the same thing here to find the probability that Fred goes to the races and loses. We just multiply P of R times P of W prime given R. It's really just this formula again applied to the event W prime and R. So we just have the same setup. So we, if we want to find this probability here, we just cross multiply probability W prime given R times probability of R. So we just multiply 0 0.8 by 0 0.4. That's 0 0.32. And it's the same story for these two probabilities. Uh, to get this one here, we have to multiply 0 0.6 by 0 0.3. That gives 0 0.18. And for this one here, we multiply 0 0.6 by 0 0.7. That's 0 0.42. Now, these events in here are all the possible events for Fred. Either he races and wins, or he races and loses, or he plays cards and wins, or he plays cards and loses. So these are the four options for Fred. That's it. Exact, it's exactly four and no more, no less. So the probabilities associated with these events that I've underlined must sum up to one. So this is one way to check these. Just sum these probabilities. Well, if we sum 0.18 and 0.32, we get 0.5. If we sum 0.42 and 0.08, we get another 0.5. 0.5 plus 0.5 is one. So they do sum to one. Now on the first question here, we want to find the probability that Fred wins. Now, for Fred to win, he can do that in two ways. Either he wins at cards, or he wins at the races. So these are the only two events for which Fred will actually win. And to find the probability that um, either he wins at cards or wins at races, we sum the probabilities because we have an R situation. Now we can read off those numbers from here. We have for the probability that he wins at cards, 0 0.18. Probability that he wins at races is 0 0.08. It makes sense to add the probabilities here because there's more than one way in which he can win. There are two ways in which you can win, so we sum the probabilities of those two ways. If we want the probability that he does not win, that means he does not win either at cards or the races, we could just work out 1 minus the probability that he wins. Because remember, Fred either wins or does not win. There are no other options. We were given that at the very start of the question. Either he wins or he doesn't win. So the probabilities associated with winning or not winning must sum to 1. Because he doesn't draw. Of course, we could also work this out by summing this probability here with this probability here. The probability that he does not win is the probability that he races and does not win, uh, plus the probability that he plays cards and does not win at cards. So that would be 0.32 plus 0.42, which is 0.74.
In part 2, we want to find the probability that he plays cards, given that he wins. Well, we can use our conditional probability formula. We get the probability of the intersection of these two events, and we divide it by the probability of the event that's conditioned on, which is W. So this event here appears in the denominator. So we just look up these probabilities. The probability that he wins at cards is 0.18. The probability that he wins, meaning he wins at either game, is 0 0.26. We had that from part 1. 0.18 divided by 0.26 is 18 over 26, which is 9 over 13. We could also answer this question using a frequency approach. We could say that Fred was involved in 100 games. In 8 of them, he went to the races on one. In 32 of them, that's 0.32 times 100, he went to the races and lost. In 18 of the 100 games, he played cards and won. In 42 of these 100 games, that's 0.42 times 100, he played cards and lost. So we want to find the probability that he played cards given that he won. So we have to condition on the event that he won. So that means we must count up the number of won games. So how many games did he actually win? Well, you can see that he won 18 games at cards and he won 8 games at races. So the total number of games that he won is 18 plus 8. So we're selecting from these two sets here. And we want to get the number of card games won out of that set, which is 18. So we have 18 divided by 18 plus 8, which, as we've seen already, is 18 over 26, or 9 over 13.